I want people, I, I want there to be more understanding between different countries and less stereotyping. And so that people don't believe, uh, don't uh, fall into emotions and just talk to each other and uh, don't judge a whole nation by just uh, several people of this nation. Hello, and welcome to the Wiser Tomorrow podcast, hosted by Tyler Gleckler. If you're enjoying these conversations, please consider liking and subscribing if you're watching on YouTube, or leaving a review if you're listening on one of your favorite podcatchers. Please enjoy today's conversation with Natasha from Natasha's Adventures. Today I'm here with Natasha from Natasha's Adventures. So, Natasha, again, thank you so much for coming on, and it's a pleasure to be getting the chance to speak with you. Hello, thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Of course. So, for those of you who aren't, for the people listening who aren't familiar with your work, if you could go ahead and maybe introduce yourself in your own background um, and talk about how you started making channels online, that would be great. So, I'm a YouTuber from Russia. I am 23 years old. And I have a channel on YouTube, which is called Natasha's Adventures. And on this channel, I am making lifestyle videos, travel vlogs. Uh, I often talk about politics and I'm from Russia. But five months ago, I moved to to Georgia and now I live here and um, I yeah, I used to I started my channel as a channel about Russian culture, uh, traveling in Russia, but now unfortunately I, I don't want to return to Russia because I think that my videos, um, they have something, uh, like there's something dangerous said in my videos that uh, are against the new Russian laws. And um, yes, that is my story. <laughs> and you're from, uh, forgive my pronunciation, Kovarovsk, right? In the far east of Russia? Yes, Khabarovsk. A smaller town called Spazdalny, but I moved to Khabarovsk to study. So I experienced living in a small town in the far east of Russia and then in a bigger town, but still in the far east of Russia. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think most Westerners and certainly most Americans only know Moscow, St. Petersburg, maybe they've heard of Siberia. So how is the Far East different than the people, the part of Russia that most people are familiar with? Yeah, sometimes uh, people call Far East Siberia, which technically is right. But in uh, Russian, we call it Far East because, you know, Russia is so wide so that basically it's easy to separate it this way. European, Russia, Siberia and even to to the uh, to the right, I mean to the east, there is the far east. Sometimes it's called Eastern Siberia, but still, uh, I don't like when far east is called Siberia because I think that Siberia is is big enough. So yeah, how is it different? I think mainly is that this uh, region is very scarcely populated. So you know, uh, there is one uh, th- like the density of population is one person per one square kilometer and uh, we have so far east takes a third part of russian territory but only on, uh, i mean russian square but only six million people live in the far east uh, while the russian population in general is 140 million so we have we have cities in the far east the biggest are kabaras Vladivostok. um uh, Yakutsk, Yuzhna Sakhalinsk, but you know, all these cities, um, it's really hard, it's really, uh, it takes a long time to get from one city to another, so from my hometown to Khabarovsk, it took me eight hours on train, and it just considered oh fast in the Far East, yes, and often my subscribers are surprised because for the, uh, for people who live in Europe, for example, eight hours is like to go from Germany to France and, and so on. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. how about the people? Uh, maybe Would you one, say the people in the uh, Far East are different? Sorry about that. I think that, uh, yes and no, I think that they are similar in the way that they're still Russians, they study in Russian school, and one more 
thing that uh, surprises foreigners is that in the Far East there is a lot of Russian ethnic, I mean Slavic peoples, because you know Russians uh, settled in the Far East starting from Blake. Well, in the 19th century there was a big um, movement of Russian settlers to the Far East. Yes, there are also indigenous peoples in the far east of Russia, but they take a small, um, like the majority of the population of the far east. So it's just like a usual, uh, it, like you can meet such uh, people in uh, Russia, in Siberia, in Western, uh, sorry, I wanted to say, you can meet such people in the far east or in Siberia, in Moscow. Yeah, we speak all the same language. We even don't have dialects because probably of uh, the USSR legacy because they generalized everybody, they prohibited uh, indigenous languages and they forced everybody to speak Russian. That's why a Russian language of a person in Vladivostok is similar to a Russian uh, language in Moscow. In, in my, uh, in, in, that's how I noticed it. And we have the same food, TV shows, but speaking of differences, I think, uh, again, the big distances between cities and the fact that uh, Far East is really far from Moscow. So for all my life, I lived there and Moscow has always been something unachievable for me. And Moscow is something cool because, you know, it is what we see on TV. And even if some Russian famous uh, singers gave tours, uh, they would go, they would visit the Far East really rarely, like maybe once in several years. So it always, when I lived in Khabarovsk, it always was a big event when some popular pop star came to our city. And I would say that mm, the region is really dependent on Moscow because Russia, even though Russia is a federation, but it is really centralized and regions don't have much independence and power, I mean politically and financially. And that's why we live with the idea that we are like in the outskirts of the country. Yes, mm -hmm. a little bit <laughs> sad it sounds. Yeah. No, I'm sure there's a lot that comes with that, though. I'm sure, like, you know, getting away from Moscow and getting away from a lot of the people who are in Moscow <laughs> is a little bit comfortable. Yes, yes. Uh, one more thing is that, yeah, um, you really feel that it's not Moscow. You really feel that um, the life is slower there. There is more... Uh, so, as I said, cities are located far from each other. There is a lot of nature and uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are leaving the Far East. I mean, throughout the last years, um, people were have been moving to Moscow or even abroad because unfortunately, the Far East is not developing. This is what I felt all my life there. And I felt sorry for this because I loved my region. When I learned about this culture, I read books about uh, how this region was discovered. I was like, wow, we have such a great history. Uh, but unfortunately, it's, uh, you know, um, it's just an undeveloped area. And that brings up the next thing I wanted to ask, uh, speak with you about is because as a, as a Russian content creator who's left Russia, of course, I think uh, you're in an especially interesting and challenging position because you initially started your channel because you wanted to highlight life in Russia and Russian culture. So I would feel like for you, it might even be more difficult to see what's happening to Russia and watch everything change. Mm. Yes. And I, as I said, I started my channel to tell about uh, Russian culture. I made videos about the Russian language. I actually wanted to make a channel about uh, learning, teaching Russian language first, but then I realized that not that many people want to learn Russian than want to learn just about Russia. And yeah, I started making videos about the Far East, but you know, I've always been opposition, no, opposition, an oppositionist towards mm -hmm. the current regime in Russia, even though I did not understand much about political science probably two years ago, but I still, as I said, because I lived in um, in this remote area, seeing that people are discontent with the politics of Moscow, that Moscow takes all their taxes from different regions of Russia and return really little 
back. I, I so I, I had this growing discontent, and that's why I even two years ago tried to highlight, uh, highlight uh, some rallies happening in Khabarovsk, and uh, still I tried to make my videos about culture, but I was never. Um, but I always told about disadvantages of living in Russia, about some... So I was r critical uh, about it. And when uh, the war with Ukraine started one year ago, almost one year ago, um, I, I changed actually the name of my channel because, you know, before my ch channel used to be called uh, Yeah Russia, like, yes, Russia. Mm -hmm. mm, so it was only about Russia, but later on I started making videos about my life, about my struggles, and I didn't like this name from the very beginning, but I could not find a better change for it. And finally, when um, when Putin invaded Ukraine, I realized that I don't want uh, to be the name of the country of this country in my channel, and even if there were if there was no war, I still wanted to change it. That's why I renamed it to Natasha's Adventures. I think it is more um, suitable for what, for what I'm filming now because I'm filming my adventures in different cities of Russia and now out of Russia. Yeah, so um, I'm still making videos and I did not lose subscribers. I remember that when the war started, uh, some people although a small amount of them um, unsubscribed me, unsubscribed me on Patreon and said that I don't want to support a Russian creator, but it was a small amount of people and I in fact received a lot of supportive comments from people who said, we understand that you are against uh, the politics of your government, that you are not your government, and it was really helpful for me. Yeah, thankfully it seems like most people understand that people like yourself left because they are in opposition of everything that's going on. But I guess there's always going to be some people who are just kind of outright Russophobic at this point and just won't humor anybody. So how have you sort of managed that? Do you do you have a lot of people in your comments and in life in Georgia who are sort of anti-Russian? Um, it's interesting, but when the war started, I was following what other YouTubers uh, say, I mean my YouTube colleagues who also make videos about Russia but in English, and for example one guy received a lot of negative comments, and I noticed that I don't receive much hate. I don't know why, maybe because that time I posted, actually didn't post the video when the war started, but just one, only one month later, because I needed to gather my thoughts and uh, maybe that's why you know I didn't post the video on the very um, on the on the peak when people were really emotional I did uh, I did not post any videos that time and I received comments from people like you should go and protest and overthrow Putin and I as a person who went to protest as a person who uh, a bit followed Russian opposition media um, and even before the war I was um, and now I'm following it even more but even before the war I knew something about it and I feel so frustrated when I see that people think that it's so easy to go and overthrow an authoritarian regime and I understand that what these people mean yeah they are right they are right when they say that if one million of you go out to the street the police will not be able to put all of you to jail. Yes, I get this thought, but it's just impossible for one million of people to go out because there are so many factors and people in Russia, the society is politicized and this has been going on, going on for all the 20 years of Putin's power because uh, the in on Russian TV we don't have any independent or opposition channel. All of them are pro-government channels, and um, people live a very a very poor life, and they basically don't have any resources to think about anything other than getting food, and. Uh, 
also well there are many fact uh, also the fact that Putin's regime is built on you know he's a former AK, KGB agent so the mentality of such people is to be constantly afraid of uh, others afraid of something foreign uh, they tend to close up they tend to they don't want to be open to the free world and this these beliefs of Putin and his, uh, I don't know, people who advise him, his advisors, these beliefs also influence the whole idea that the country is uh, living on. So Russia doesn't have, um, so these ideas are not developed, like the ideas of defending human rights, for example. The idea that people have is to just be cooler than the best, be stronger, Sorry, I, <laughs> it's another topic I forgot was what, uh, yeah, the initial question was, was uh, what kind of negativity I experienced, right? And um, mm -hmm. yep. I lived in the Russian society and I, I'm not a sociologist or psychologist and probably I am not able to explain all these philosophical topics, but what I'm trying to say is that it's just impossible in today's Russia to uh, protest and um, that's what I'm trying to, I try to explain to people in the comments, but what I get is just, you are slaves, it is, it is, your, it is in your genes, the slave mentality, you yeah. cannot, like, you deserve such a ruler, and people often mention this phrase said by Churchill, and maybe it was not said by Churchill, that uh, all people deserve their ruler, something like this. So if we Russians mm. led such a dictator to power, so we are responsible for this, which is partially true. And it is also an interesting topic about guilt and responsibility. And, you know, on Russian YouTube, YouTube is uh, thankfully still not banned in Russia. And surprisingly, because, you know, Russia banned Facebook, Instagram, so YouTube still works, and on Russian YouTube we have a lot of discussions among Russian journalists, because one more interesting fact, Russian independent journalists were all forced to go to YouTube because it is their only platform. So there are lots of professional uh, journalists who have, you know, a good, they have a whole, they have teams who help them with lighting, sound. So I think that if uh, the regime was for a year, th these journalists would work on TV, but now YouTube is their only platform, so they discuss these topics, so what is guilt, what is responsibility, and I decided that I will, I am responsible for, not for the war, but for my actions now because of the war, that's why. Uh, I will do what I can, I'm already doing, like, I go to protest, I spread a word online, so I think that I am immune to such hate comments. I am not really worried about them. And I would say that still, I got more supportive comments that, than non-supportive. Good to hear that there's more support than more hate. And again, of course, I agree with you. And I've seen some of those comments, not so much on your videos, but on a few of the creators I think you're probably referencing. And another thing that's interesting about your situation or your generation is you're a part of the first generation that spent none of their life in the Soviet Union, not even as a small child. So do you notice that there's a big difference between Russian people like yourself who had no experience in the Soviet Union versus people who even spent part of their childhood? Uh, yes, I've seen, I think there is a difference, and I can tell it on the example of my parents. And they are, uh, I forgot, uh, yeah, they're about 50, 55. My parents and they spent their youth in the 90s and the 90s in Russia was on one hand a time of freedom because the USSR collapsed but collapsed but on the other hand the 90s were poor and really unstable that's why many people now including my parents probably tend to um, idealize the Soviet times and when I ask my mom about this, well, my dad doesn't like it, doesn't like, uh, he says that he didn't like the USSR, but for some reason he now is, um, 
kind of put in support, or I don't know how it works. But my mom says that, oh, it was so, like, you know, uh, nice and roses in the USSR because it was stable. Because after school, you went to a university, and the university guaranteed a stable workplace for you somewhere in a factory. And for them, it's good when the life is decided for you. When I hear this, well, when I was a child, I was like, uh, I, I think that when I was a child, I also was falling into this trap of idealizing the Soviet Union. And I was thinking, yes, indeed, it's really good when life is stable and is already prepared for you. Because in today's Russia, you have to... Um, Go, we, you have to go to university and the university some, for some people is not free so you have to be lucky and smart enough to get enough uh, points to get to university and then if the job is not guaranteed for you and uh, it's all that bad but in the USSR it was all good so that's what I also thought as a child and um, that's what many people say the people who uh, I'm so sorry that they spent their youth, like 20s, 30s, in the 90s, and uh, now they are tired of this life, and they uh, they think that stability is better than, you know, this democracy and freedom. So I see that people, older people, they are more conservative, they are less open to something new, and... Uh, but what is unusual is that in Russia, it's mostly old, uh, old people, like 50 plus, who support this war. Um, usually, I heard it from some political scientists that usually it's maybe on the contrary, because the society must be young and energized to want to go to the war. But the thing about Russia is that all these, uh, poli uh, you know, Russia is... Um, gerontocracy when only when old people are in the power uh, all these people including putin and all the others they send young guys to the front and they actively facilitate this war um, sending young people but not going to the war themselves so i see that uh, i see it actually on the example of other countries I think that the same happens in t Turkey, or maybe in uh, some in some other kind of authoritarian countries. Even here in Georgia, Georgia is uh, pr um, it's interesting because I can't speak about Georgia. I don't much understand this country, right? But what I see is that they want to they strive to go th strive to go to the West. But also, this country is really religious and conservative, and uh, it also creates some problems, for example, for a pro-LGBT movement here. So, far-right religious activists, um, they try to disrupt, they, in, uh, like two years ago, they disrupted a pride, pride here, and I see that young people all over the world want freedom, they, they want and by freedom, I don't mean like drinking coffee with soy milk and I don't know watching TikTok, but I mean real uh, human rights and, um, oh, sorry, it's, it's a very, no it, I have many thoughts about this topic, but it's hard to put them. So I think that young people of today's world, they want globalization. I am for globalization. I think there's nothing bad about it because here, even in Georgia or, okay, in Russia, well, in Russia, we don't have McDonald's anymore, but let's say KFC, it still stayed in Russia. So yes, in Russia, there's KFC, in Georgia, there's KFC, but still both in Russia and Georgia, there are local bakeries or restaurants of local food and many people say oh my god mcdonald's and kfc destroy the authenticities of different countries no it's just how the world works and i am really for integration to uh, different cultures i mean yes and um, i i hope that dictators will be gone and that uh, we young because the future is uh, in our heads, right? And why these people, why these people who already almost 
in the end of their life, they decide my future and my life now. This is unfair. Yeah, it's very unfair and it's kind of crazy. But I guess that, that there's a silver lining here, which is that, as you said, most of the young people in Russia are of the same opinion as you and I, which means it's really just a matter of time. I mean, obviously, it couldn't come quickly enough, but the change will come. That much we can be sure of. Yes. And, yeah, I also was thinking about it just recently that I wish all these old people in the power to, uh, to be gone and to bring... I, I wish we had younger politicians. Well, it's not... Or maybe I sound ageist. I want to sound ageist because actually... Uh, it's not bad that they are old people in the power. It's bad that they all come from one political, mm, like one background, uh, sort of set right. of ide background. Yeah, yeah, one set of ideas. So they, there's no diversity, and unfortunately, we Rus young Russians experience uh, so-called post-Soviet trauma because we, okay, we grew up as a free pro-Western thinking people, but our parents raised many of us that way so that we still have this... Uh, so, for example, myself, I still uh, realize that I... In some, in some areas of life, I, I behave in some particular way because I was uh, taught to do it when I was back in Russia. For example, Russian schools, they are as many institutions like universities and hospitals, they they don't really value mm, your freedom, your personality. They treat you as a part of the system, of a bigger system. So mm, I remember actually uh, three years ago, I went to the United States to study as an exchange student at the university in Minnesota. and. This was a big, uh, I was shocked how it's different because I studied in the Russian university in Khabarovsk and then in uh, Minnesota and I was, looked, was like, wow, I'm not treated as, uh, yeah, so I was like, wow, I'm respected here. My opinion is valued. And when I ask a question, uh, for example, after the lecture or during the lecture, I ask a professor. It doesn't mean that I'm stupid or that I didn't listen to the professor. On the contrary, the professor is glad and is even encouraged by my question because it means that I am listening and if I don't understand, I want to um, correct myself and it's great. And I, um, I have goosebumps when I say it, but yeah, I really like such a attitude to teaching, to, to universities, to schools. And then Russia, well, this, again, this all, it's like, this all is the consequences of the whole Putin's uh, pol politics, because when the country is like a swamp that is not developing, it affects any industry, any institution, universities, hospitals, and yeah, and I feel that, uh, even though we are really free thinking, but still there are many young Russian people, and I know such people, who don't realize that they live in an authoritarian regime. Well, they don't even know what uh, an authoritarian regime is. And I was like this uh, like two years ago. But now I'm happy that I'm learning. I'm again watching all these Russian political scientists and journalists who are making videos on YouTube. And I... I'm learning, but how many people there still consume propaganda and still um, believe and, and still fall into this trap of uh, traditional values th that uh, Putin is trying to use as his, uh, you know, his, his um, main agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sad. Well, as an American, obviously, I'm very happy to hear that you had a good time at the university over there. Did you, beyond school, how did you find life in the U.S.? Did you enjoy it? What did you like and what did you dislike? Um, first, I already studied something about life in the U.S. even before going there. I was just interested in life there. And, you know, we watched, uh, so especially probably the year of 2015 when, um, you know, on Tumblr, there were pictures of 
uh, Los Angeles. Uh, so usually these pictures contain a sunset in LA, uh, American flag waving in the skies, skateboards, I don't know. So all these aesthetics, uh, also American school, I really liked it. And I also watched American movies. I really, I have a dream to visit, uh, to study in an American school. And actually in Russia, there was an exchange program for school students. It was called FLEX. And by this program, uh, this program operates in Russia, in Georgia, in Ukraine. But uh, that year when I learned about this program and was already going to apply to it, that year, just one week later, I learned about it. The program was shut down by the Russian government oh. uh, for the reason they cre they made up made up some reason. I don't know. I don't know if it's true, but they said they said that one American host family hosted a Russian guy, and this host family turned out to be a gay couple, and they made this guy to be gay or something like this or that he didn't want to go to Russia because he's gay so I, I don't even remember this crap I think that they made it up using people uh, homophobic fears uh, I think that there's uh, just a political reason behind it but it was I was 14 and it was my dream to go there and you know my dream was just crashed by my government this is when I started to be uh, offended with the Russian government. So, um, what I was saying, I watched a lot of YouTubers and uh, I would say that in the beginning I idealized life in the US, but then I learned that there are problems too. And I was glad that now I can go there by myself. And I saw all these uh, big cars, big houses, uh, Starbucks, uh, I don't know, uh, school, uh, American schools with, well, I studied in university, um, uh, so uh, the campus of the university, it really surprised me how it is, how com comfortable it is. Every little detail is uh, thought of for students' uh, convenience, and it was the University of Minnesota. I learned from other guys from my exchange program that they studied in the smaller universities and they, they didn't like something there, but I really liked my placement. So it was, I was placed there randomly and I think I was really lucky with the University of Minnesota. And I, again, really liked the attitude of professors. I liked the fact that there is a website called Rate My Professor and you can <laughs> check. Yeah, I never used it, but in Russia, it's like, what? In Russia, when you go to university, you cannot choose your classes. You choose the major when you only enter the university, and all, then all the four or five years, you cannot change it. It's really strict. Well, you, you can drop out and maybe apply the next year to another major, but I mean that in the United States universities, it is really flexible. You can choose the time and uh, the the day of the week, and it was it was like wow, this system is so well developed. And uh, in Russia, when you go to uh, to study something, you don't know like you know the name of the professor, but. I, uh, these professors in Russia, they work in these universities only because they have nowhere to go. That's kind of impression they had from my university, from talking with my peers, from even from Moscow, you know. Uh, a lot of people who criticize me say, oh, she lived in like outskirts of Russia and that's why she doesn't like it that much. But okay, I talked even to guys who studied in Moscow State University, in, uh, in some other top universities of Russia, and they said, like, Natasha, no, it's all the same here. We, we are treated the same as you are treated there. And I was like, wow, uh, maybe only the higher school of economics in Russia is the most liberal university, uh, but Anyway, now, because of the war and the politics in Russia, even even in the higher school of economics, it's going to be worse. So anyway, uh, returning to the topic <laughs> of the United States, I also was surprised by how uh, the level, the, the standard of living, 
because the poverty that I saw in Russia, uh, yes, the United States also have poverty, but at least there people have food banks, they have social welfare programs, and I did not see, there's no such a thing in Russia. And uh, um, also, I, I like the fact that you can protest, that people don't care about uh, wearing fancy clothes to the university. And it's just my style because I really enjoy this new um, opportunity to just go to sweatpants to my classes. And yeah, that's what I liked. I also uh, traveled a lot in the country, seen different states. What I didn't like is uh, I did not personally met I mean, didn't incur, encounter such situations, but um, my friend did, and uh, there's racism still, or uh, expensive, um, what do you call it, medical uh, insurance, right? Yeah, and, insurance. Yeah, also problems with guns. There's lots of problems in the, the, in the United States. And so, but I, what I like is that this in the society, there is at least a conversation and an attempt to do something about it because so many different opi uh, opinion people are uh, arguing all the time and I, I think it's healthy to have such a conversation. Yes. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And again, that's that's the thing I think I guess I take the most pride of being from the U.S. And did you enjoy it to the point that you could see yourself living there one day? Does that have any appeal to you to eventually leave Georgia and go to Western Europe or the U.S.? I still don't know. It's um, this question when I ask it um, myself, I feel a little bit anxious because, well, if I, like, you know, when I went to the United States, it feels that... Um, the world stopped being black and white for me. Well, I always try to be really critically thinking, but still, when I saw the drawbacks of this country, for example, the main anxiety for me is uh, the gun law, uh, public shootings, and uh, I'm so anxious so that I would be scared. Because what if it happens in my supermarket near my house or uh, at, school, at the school of my child? And that's probably, you know, I can, I can bear anything, but only this problem is the most scary for me. Yeah. Uh, well, I think about Canada. Canada for me is like the U.S., but without the gun problem. <laughs> <laughs> Simply mm. putting it that way. Uh, yes. But another thing is that Canada is a cold country, and for. All, uh, 23 years of living in Russia, I realized that I like warm, <laughs> yeah. warm weathers, warm climates. So I don't know. At the same time, uh, I can go. I can try to go to the Western Europe. I mean, the European Union. Yes. But what I like about so the United States, about Canada, and maybe Australia and New Zealand, is that these countries are built by immigrants, and they are welcoming to immigrants. And even now. Uh, the United States is uh, making, I heard that they are going to make more educational programs for Russians. And it's good, it's good that this country is uh, um, inviting, attracting all the smart people from the countries that, that, uh, the countries that don't value their smart people. So, um, so I feel that it will be easier for me to live in the United States than, let's say, in Germany or Britain, but I don't know. I, I still think that I speak English and I can live in Berlin with it. I can live, I don't know, in, in America, in Britain. So um, I decided that I will not worry about this. Now I live in Georgia, I have my YouTube channel and I can travel to different countries, not uh, not many of them because I have a Russian passport, but still I maybe want to study in the United States or in Canada. I will think about it, but since again it was a big topic, a big uh, reason of anxiety for me, like, oh my god, I have to choose a university, a major, what if I don't like it, it's all difficult to... Um, to get visa there, to send all the documents, to 
you know, uh, translate my uh, diploma and so on. So I decided that I would think about this later. And it is also an important thing that I realized because in Russia you are pushed after the school, you are pushed to go to the university. There is only one frame of life that you should leave this narrow corridor and you cannot go. Like, now I realize that I'm 23 now and in Russia, by this time, uh, it's already considered that I am old as a woman. I am old because I have already to be married. I already have to have children because if I, the older I become, uh, the, are, the harder for me it will be to give a birth. What if I don't want to give a birth? What if I don't want to be married? So, but still, many girls, especially in uh, conservative families, in small towns, they are forced by their parents, by their society, and they don't even know that there is another route. So now what I realize is that I will not push myself, I will not be in a hurry, and I will just enjoy my life. Luckily now, I am in Georgia, I feel safe here, I again have my YouTube channel, with, which is my job now and my job and hobby because I really like, love it. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great, of course. And do you enjoy Georgia? How's Georgia been? Well, Georgia is... Uh, I probably had an euphoria when I first came here because uh, what I like is that this country is... Um, well, its government is kind of on the fence regarding Russian politics, but many people, I would say a majority, they are pro-Western and anti-Russian. Because Russia and Georgia also had a, a, a short war in 2008, you know, and uh, Russia is still occupying a part of Georgian territory, has military bases there, and um, Russia is uh, conducting this imperialistic politics towards Georgia, and that's why I felt, um, you know, I felt that I should not be here, that local people hate me, that I am out of a place here. Because on the streets there are graffitis, like Russians go home and so on. And um, um, also the fact that this year, uh, when the wars with Ukraine started, many Russians left Russia to Georgia because it is the closest country. This country has a visa free for Russians and so on and so forth. And in um, autumn of the 2022, there was another big influx of Russian immigrants, but this time mostly men who were running from mobilization. So there are more and more people and I see that Georgian society is becoming uh, more maybe so to say, uh, bothered uh, by, by Russians here. Uh, they hear the Russian speech more often and uh, they see our Russian Slavic faces and they are constantly reminded that there is something foreign in your country. I try to um, calm myself down because, well, there always has been some little par portion of Russian speaking people in Georgia, um, many Georgian people speak Russian, mostly the older generation because they lived in the USSR which, where they studied Russian in school. The younger generation tend to speak English and I like that the younger generation is again is really progressive and um, I think that uh, I'm safe here even though the rumors among Georgians themselves and Russians here that uh, Georgian government is kind of pro-Russian and it gives me some anxiety what if they will you know uh, there are many people who can be arrested in Russia but they live in Georgia now what if uh, Russian FSB the intelligence police or whatever they are called I don't think that they're intelligent, but anyway, what if this police has some ties here in Georgia and what if they arrest me or some other people and bring them to Russia? So I have these fears, but I really hope that the Georgian government will not be friendly with the Russian government. And yeah, as the country is, you know, there are many um, Westerners, I mean, expats who live here, who rent apartments here and work as digital nomads because Georgia is 
Again, speaking only about Belize, I cannot say for the rest of the country, but this the capital, it's really beautiful. It has beautiful architecture, amazing Georgian food. Uh, ha have you ever tried Georgian food in America? A little bit, actually. Yeah, I have a Georgian friend who's, ha who's showed me a few things. Mm, yeah, and I know that in America, there are also Georgian restaurants. In Russia, they're popular, and I love Georgian cuisine it's 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 delicious and uh, what else the mountains and um, just the fact you know when i came here yes i was a little bothered by the graffitis like russians go home and but actually i was also kind of cheered up by these graffitis because yeah these graffitis are saying not good words about myself but at least it shows me that I'm not in Russia first and that uh, the people who wrote this and the majority of people probably are against the Russian politics which is good and also there are many Ukrainian flags here in Belize people ha not only people hang it on their in their houses but like small businesses the restaurants you know when you open a menu in a restaurant there's often in, in the menu, it says Russia is occupants or uh, Slava Ukraini, which is glory to Ukraine. And, well, it's on one hand is uh, not sad, but kind of unpleasant because, yeah, I realized that uh, these people are against the war. I'm also against the war. But uh, this reminds me that I'm a Russian and by some people, I'm not welcome here. Yeah, yes. well, again... I'm, I'm happy that most of the people aren't of that mind. And I saw even in your most recent video, the graffiti, there's even some Russian graffiti that didn't make a lot of sense. Somebody spray painted beer on the wall, for example. <laughs> so. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big fan of graffiti, and I uh, like to look at them. And um, somehow all the graffiti in the world are in English. But uh, I sometimes notice something written in Russian, for example, yeah, as you said, this, uh, the, it was written Kiva, beer, it's funny, and did you like the fonts, by the way? I think, like, the letters themselves. Which fonts? Oh, uh, the yeah, fonts. actually, yes, yes, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, for me, it looked kind of ugly, but also maybe it's <laughs> the purpose, <laughs> maybe it's, yeah. oh, it's art that I don't understand. So, I sometimes see something written in Russian, some apps, uh, app abstract words, but mostly it's in Georgian or in English. And I learned the Georgian alphabet. Of course, I don't, I think I am unable to learn this language. It is extremely difficult, but I learned the alphabet. And I sometimes read these uh, street arts uh, or some street advertisement or signs. And you know, it feels like you're playing a game and a, com a video game and uh, <laughs> you're uh, coming up to some poster on the wall, wall and you can read it in the game. It's like te textures, we call it texture in Russian, like mm -hmm. textures of the game open for you or something like this. <laughs> yeah, and especially, I mean, you studied, you, your degree is in linguistics as well, right? So that's perfectly up your alley. Yes, I, uh, uh, yes, I am now proud to say that I have a degree in <laughs> linguistics. <laughs> yeah, um, I, do, I don't know much about linguistics after four years of studying there. Like, if you ask me what a syntax is, or what else? I don't remember. I, I, it's not interesting for me. I most like <laughs> sure. social, <laughs> yeah, social linguistics, and I like... Um, as a linguist, maybe in a way, I just like different languages. I sometimes like how they are um, intertwined between each other, and just some phrases in Georgian, and that they don't have any um, any similar any similarity with other languages. So yeah, I enjoy the, the Georgian letters. They are very beautiful. I think actually. Uh, it's it's one of the most beautiful alphabets in the world. Do, what do you think? I would agree. It almost reminds me of some East Asian languages. It looks like Thai or, or something mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia sometimes because it really flows nicely. Yes. Yeah, I would also say that uh, Thai and there's one more country, maybe Myanmar, maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, but Cambodia some, maybe. 
Yeah, they also they have. It also reminds me of um, what that language was called from the Lord of the Rings, Quenya language. Um, uh, like el- elvish, something like yeah, that. Yeah, elvish. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah, I do see. That's funny you say that. I do see what you mean. <laughs> they kind of do resemble each other. So we're we're coming up on time, and I don't want to. I know it's already late for you, so I don't want to take too much of your time. But one question it's I wanted fine. to make sure to get to. Okay. I just wanted to make sure to get to how is your communication and relationships with friends and family back in Russia? Are you able to keep in touch? Do you choose to keep in touch? How is that going? Uh, you know, I don't have many friends left in Russia. I have a really like small circle of friends and just one friend there probably with some classmates and my friends, they are also against Putin, against this war, so we share our position. Luckily, I didn't have to cut relationships with other people. I think it would be really painful for me. So, yeah, I have one friend, she studies in a medical university. She, of course, doesn't support the war, she doesn't support Putin, but uh, she is uh, also, she doesn't understand much about politics, so sometimes I realized that some of my ideas that she will not understand it and but we still discuss something unrelated but what yeah when we discuss the war of course she's against it but she's not that active than myself because she studies in the medical university uh, and I'm so sorry for the conditions again uh, the condition that Russian future Russian doctors are studying in it's really difficult for them, uh, and the, again, how they are treated, so, yeah, I'm really sorry for her. I have um, parents in Spask, and as I said, my parents are, they are not pro-Putin, but they are that kind of people who believe the Russian propaganda, and the Russian propaganda uh, is not... The, the, the goal of Russian propaganda is not to make you believe to one particular thing, like Putin is good, I don't know, Obama is bad, but they try to, uh, the Russian propaganda uh, tries to uh, make people to be worried about anything. I, no, no, it's wrong. Uh, how to say? It's like the propaganda makes people to think that there is no truth anywhere. You cannot find truth anywhere. Russian media are lying, uh, Western media are lying too, and it's not Putin who started the war, it's America, or it's uh, Masons, or reptiloids, or whoever, or something like mm-hmm. this. So, yeah, they really, um, it's really profitable for the Russian propaganda to make people. Mm, to be uh, to be loaded by this information coming from different sources and not to be able to find the true truth there. So my, that's why my parents, they, it's not that they support Putin. My mom doesn't like Putin for many reasons. Uh, but also they think that we are small people, we cannot control it. Politic is something that is... Uh, uh, it's not our business, it is the business of these people in the power, politicians, we're small people, we are just uh, nothing here. So that is their position. I tried to talk to them throughout the previous year and it's not that we had really uh, hard discussions because we are more, we are polite with each other. I mean, I know that many Russians had to uh, t- uh, had to stop talking to their parents or they had really they had quarrels because of this situation but no, for me, because my parents they know my pro-Western position they uh, they don't try to change my opinion and I don't try to change their, their opinion yes, so um, I am not going to return to Russia as I said before and one more thing about my parents is that, you know, uh, I'm a lesbian and I recently said it in my video, in my vlog, actually for the first time when I mentioned it on my YouTube, it was a big uh, event for me, a big achievement because I already mentioned mm-hmm. it on my Insta story and my 
mom doesn't use Instagram because now it's banned in Russia and you have to use VPN but her colleagues from her job watch my Instagram and Ooh. sometimes they tell to her that I am uh, protesting with the Ukrainian flag or that I went there and that and it's just funny. Yeah, so, but my dad watches my YouTube channel in in English, but he uses uh, like a voice over a translator that translates it to Russian and my mom doesn't watch my videos, but dad shows them to her and I already had some questions from her like uh, once I, I in my video like half a year ago I said I want to leave Russia and I want to like find a girlfriend finally to be happy to be in happy relationships and then uh, my dad told it to my mom and she messaged me what do you mean by find a girlfriend and I I don't know I was really angry that sh uh, because we already discussed the LGBT with her and she is really homophobic. I did not expect her to be that aggressive. And uh, I don't want to discuss the topic with her. And even if now she is, uh, she will ask me like, what, why you said it in your video? Are you really a lesbian? For me, um, even if she will be angry at me, well, it's not my problem, it's my life. I know that for many people, it is really painful when parents, you know, um, so to say, um, I forgot, like, when they say, you're not my son anymore, <laughs> don't leave without me, go, yeah. yeah, yeah, so I, maybe because I'm older now, I'm 23, and I have been living uh, in another city, like, for five, six years already, so I don't depend on my parents, and, well, they're also a difficult situation in our, like, um, in our family, I cannot say that we're like, you know, this happy, uh, ideal, perfect family. So I'm kind of offended. Like, you did many bad things to me, and now you want to be like, uh, and now you have one more um, thing to be. Uh, to, to, uh, sorry, my English. Just be rude and not accept about you. Yes, yes. Yeah, so. I am not worried about this, I don't care what they will think, but of course I uh, love my parents and I hope that one day I will be able to return to Russia and to visit them sometime, maybe to go on a travel, uh, somewhere to travel with them. And yeah, and now I would say that we have better relationships than five years ago, two years ago, so I think it's fine, yeah. Um, so, I also think that Russia is, um, I want to travel in Russia, but I don't want to return there since Putin in power, it's just my position, and at first I'm scared, what if I already said something for, that is in a criminal code of Russia, uh, so just in, because of safety I will not go there, and also, I don't know, it feels really weird for me to travel in that country now, and make such happy videos about, you know, Russian food, Russian traditions, when uh, there is the war going on, and um, that's why I will not return there. I will, uh, I will ask one final, final question, just to end on a little bit of a po more positive note, because you've mentioned that the only thing really keeping you from doing a lot of traveling is just your passport at the moment. But what are a few of the places that you'd really love the chance to visit? Mm. I would like to go to Australia. I, I really like um, learning about uh, the colonization history of this um, region of the world because I'm really interested in the history of colonization. Uh, <laughs> yes, colon no <laughs> colon co colonization of my own region. You know, the far mm. east of Russia. It also was kind of colonized by. Uh, Russia, uh, western part of Russia. So I really like to study like all these colonial histories. Uh, so also, I forgot it's called the Easter Island, close to Chile, mm -hmm. with these mm -hmm. stone heads. I have a dream to to see them. I think I would like to travel to Europe, to many countries, and because I already traveled in the U.S., you know, I visited 16 states 
even Hawaii. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we traveled with other Russian exchange students. We, you know, we used couch surfing. We nice. went to cheap. Uh, we, we, so we traveled as cheap as we can. It was a unique experience. Now I would not use couch surfing. I would, <laughs> I, I would eat a good food, but that mm -hmm. was an experience. Yeah. So... I think that I already saw the nature of uh, the United States. Well, there are still some things that I didn't see, but um, yeah, maybe something. Um, yeah, I, I have also a dream of going to the Mal Maldives Islands. Just, mm -hmm. you know, these blue waters. Beautiful beaches. Yes, yes. So, Australia, Europe, America. But yeah, uh, as for the US, I'm not interested in something like uh, Grand Canyon, something nature, uh, nature stuff. I like the cities of America, and I mm. visited um, like cities on the west coast, on the east coast, but I didn't visit Boston. So I was mm. like New Orleans, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale in Florida, New York, Philadelphia, and and it was not. Um, suitable for us we didn't buy a ticket to boston so now we have a dream to visit it yes <laughs> well I, I can't believe how much you made i think you've been to more of the u.s than i probably have you've been literally <laughs> everywhere everywhere that everywhere that matters let's say <laughs> yeah well again it's uh your story is incredible and it's it's for, especially from an american perspective sitting here it's it's unbelievable what you've had to go through and I think we all appreciate you sharing everything that you know in your own experience. And I think it's important for both Russian, Ukrainian, and the whole world. So really, thank you so much for what you do. And thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Yeah, thank you. It is a big honor to be on your podcast. And it's really, uh, I really like to share my perspective uh, as a Russian. I hope that maybe just by my little contribution I'm also helping the free world spread an awareness about uh, well about uh, the situation of Russian people who are against the politics of Putin about Ukraine and yeah just uh, so I want people I, I want there to be more understanding between different countries and less stereotyping and so that people don't believe, uh, d don't uh, fall into emotions and just talk to each other and uh, don't judge a whole nation by just uh, several people of this nation. So thank you so much. No, of course. And as a, as a final word on that note, I mean, what's crazy to consider is if, if our two countries were in conflict in our parents' generation, I mean, this was not possible. The fact that we're able to sit here and have this conversation yes. and I found your videos is amazing and that's the difference between the past and the future.